What's up guys, my name is Ace and welcome to my first dark matter guide and this will be on SMGs. So with this guide, what I'm going to be doing is sharing the most effective ways that I found to get all of the camos for each class of weapon in the game. So each episode is going to be a different class of weapon and today we're going to be covering the SMGs. For anyone that isn't aware of what Dark Matter is, because I surprisingly get asked about this fairly often, people that don't even know what Dark Matter is, Dark Matter is the camo that you will earn for your guns once you've completed every single camo in the game for all of the guns, the launchers, and the combat knife. And it looks like this. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so first off, we have to get 100 headshots with our SMGs, and once you get the 100 headshots, then it will unlock the final 5 challenges that you need to complete in order to get the gold camo for that gun. So first off, we are going to have a look at how to get headshots more effectively with the SMGs. Now the first thing to keep in mind is I'm going to share a few different methods, and find the method that works best for you for the particular gun that you are working on. It's going to be different from person to person, some people play differently than others, and some methods just won't work for you, so try a different method out. And it's also different from gun to gun. What works with the Weevil might not work the same with the Vesper, because they handle very, very differently. So the first method I'm going to share, and this is one of the most commonly suggested methods, is to play Hardcore and aim for the head. With Hardcore game modes, just in case you don't know, you have 30 health rather than 100 health. So with Almost all of the SMGs out to about a medium range, it's going to be a one-shot headshot in Hardcore. Because of this, it is pretty nice because all you have to do is aim for the head and pull the trigger. You don't really have to worry about recoil, and you definitely don't have to worry about flinch, which is when the enemy shoots you and you get kicked up above your target. You don't have to worry about that in Hardcore because if you're being shot, you're already dead. So this method can be very effective and for some people it works amazingly well because they can handle hardcore very well. But for a lot of people they either don't like playing hardcore, they simply don't enjoy it and they, they don't want to bother going into hardcore. Or they just really struggle to stay alive in hardcore and they struggle to get kills in the first place. And if this is you, this probably isn't going to be the best method for you for SMGs. So the next method I'm going to be sharing is to play regular core game modes and just aim a little bit higher than you normally would, but you don't want to aim too high. So you don't want to be aiming directly for the head most of the time with this method because we have to deal with first off recoil and second we have to deal with that flinch if the enemy shoots us back. And if we're aiming directly at the head, both of these things can very easily take us up above our target and then we'll just get killed. So I find with a lot of the guns, it does take a little bit of getting used to the gun and finding the right spot to aim. But with a lot of the guns, you aim right around the neck level. By aiming at the neck level, you, you usually put a couple shots into the neck area, and then you either get flinched up into the head, or the recoil will take you up into the head shot. While doing all of this, you do have to try and compensate for that as well. Like If you, if you do get kicked above their head a little bit, you do have to try and pull that back down onto the head, but it's still much better than starting off on their head and then getting kicked way, way above their head. This is the method that I used most of the time for the SMGs because I'm quite confident in my abilities to do this. I find it's an excellent way to play uh, pretty naturally. You don't have to change your playstyle up too much. Just play the way you'd normally play and aim a little bit higher and try to get into those headshots. If you don't get the headshot though, don't worry about it. As long as you're getting the kills, that's okay. Now with this method, just keep in mind, like I said, you have to adjust to the different guns. So for the Vesper, for instance, or the VMP, they have a fair amount of vertical recoil. And because of this, you might want to aim a little bit lower on the body than you would with something like the Razorback or the Weevil, because those guns are quite accurate. They stay within a very uh, small area and they don't kick upwards too much. So you really only have to compensate for flinch rather than flinch and recoil. Now the final method I'm going to be sharing with the SMGs, and this one can work very effectively, especially if you're having a hard time controlling the recoil of the gun to stay on the head, is to use a laser sight and just hip fire while also aiming high. Now again, we don't want to aim too high because there still is a little bit of flinch when you're shot, but at least with this method you don't really have to worry about recoil too much because your bullets just go within that hip fire spread, and you might get a lot of lucky headshots this way, or kind of somewhat skilled headshots, but there is a little bit of that hip fire luck going on as well. So this is an excellent method if you really struggle to control that recoil. And another little thing that I wanted to add is 
try out rapid fire on some of the guns as well when using this method because like i said you don't have to worry too much about that recoil you just want to spray those bullets down range within that that grouping uh, that you have while you're hip firing and rapid fire can be quite helpful in this scenario but if you find it's not working for you make sure you take it off play around with it a little bit this is an excellent technique like i said if you don't like dealing with that recoil too much and it can be very very effective so those are my top three methods for maximizing your odds of getting headshots while using the SMGs in this game. Like I said, it can change from person to person and it can change from gun to gun. So don't be afraid to play around with these three methods a little bit. One question that I get asked a lot about headshots with SMGs is should I be using sights like the ELO or the Reflex or the Recon or Varix, whatever it might be, should I be using those to get headshots more effectively? And my answer to this is use what you feel most comfortable with and use what works. Don't be afraid to play around with it a little bit, but if you find that using the recon sight, for instance, is just terrible for you and you, you can't aim at all, which it actually is for me with all of the SMGs, then stop using it. I find that for all of the SMGs, aside from the Razorback and the Pharaoh, I found that using the iron sights was best. I tried using sights with the other guns, and it was okay for some of them, but it still was just never as good as the iron sights for me. So I personally don't like using sights on all of the SMGs aside from, like I said, the Pharaoh and the Razorback. But I found when I was using the Razorback, I was really struggling to use the iron sights. So I played around with it a little bit, I put a reflex sight on, and boom, just like that, I was getting headshots like crazy with it. So definitely play around with it, find what works for you. If you find something's really uncomfortable and it's just not working, then stop doing it. Another tip that I have with the SMGs that I find to be very effective is use the stock and strafe side to side in your gunfight. First off, when you're strafing with the stock, you're evading your enemy shots, which not only keeps you alive, but it also keeps you from flinching as much as you normally would. And it also allows you to make those fine movements left and right to your aim to get on target onto your headshot more effectively. So I would definitely, definitely recommend putting stock on. I mean, if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But I just find for me, it works very, very effectively. It also allows me to have my sights up and ready to go as I come around the corner. I can have them ready at the perfect height, ready to get that headshot. Staying on the topic of headshots, I just wanted to mention game modes really quick. And the simple tip that I have for game modes is first off, play game modes that you're comfortable getting lots of kills on and also play game modes that allow you to get lots of kills. So for instance, Search and Destroy is probably not going to be your best bet just because there's not very many kills to go around. Also, if you're, say, just not comfortable in Free For All, don't play Free For All. If you're not comfortable in Team Deathmatch, don't play Team Deathmatch. Play the game modes that you're more comfortable with that allow you to get lots of kills. Because the more kills you get, the more chances you have of getting headshots. One mode in particular that I wanted to point out, because I know a lot of people are likely going to suggest it, is Hardcore Free For All. Especially if you're going for that hardcore method of going for headshots, Hardcore Free For All is great because you can often isolate individual gunfights. They're usually 1v1 gunfights, and you just have to aim for the head. Like I said though, if you're not comfortable with it, don't play it. So that's my tips for getting headshots more effectively with the SMGs. Now let's get into the final five challenges. So these challenges don't unlock until you complete the 100 headshots for the particular gun that you're working on. But once you get those 100 headshots done, you unlock all five of these at once. The first camo is the Ardent camo. And this one requires you to get 10 revenge medals by killing the player that killed you last. And these ones, I find, don't really focus on them too much. Don't really worry about them. They just happen over time while you work on the other challenges. So don't really focus too hard on trying to find that one specific guy that killed you. Just play the game naturally and get those kills. The next camo is the Burnt Camo, and this one's pretty simple. It requires you to get 50 kills with the SMG without any attachments on it. This one's very straightforward, so pretty simple. You just get your 50 kills, make sure you don't have any attachments on your gun. Next is 50 kills with 5 attachments and an optic on your gun. Again, this one is very straightforward, although I will say try to avoid using the Varric sight on this because that can interfere with our Chameleon Camo, which we'll talk about in a little bit. After Bliss, we have the Battle Camo, and the Battle Camo requires you to get two rapid kills five times with both kills coming from the SMG that you're using. This one, again, it's pretty straightforward, and I find that this one just happens over time as you're completing the other ones. Like, as you're getting the 50 kills with no attachments, and then the 50 kills with five attachments and an optic, these kills tend to just come naturally, especially if you're playing objective team-based modes. 
And finally, we have Chameleon Camo, which, like I mentioned, you have to get five kills without dying five times with the gun. Now, just to clear up a few things here, a lot of people seem to think that you just have to earn a Bloodthirsty Medal while using the gun, while the gun is in your hand. This is not necessarily true. The medal itself doesn't matter. You just have to get five kills within that one life with that gun. So if you use the gun to get two kills, and then maybe you pull out a launcher and you get a kill with your launcher or you get a grenade kill in between, that one kill you got in between doesn't count towards the five kills in that one life for your gun. So you still have to get your three other kills with the gun before dying in order for it to count for one out of these five challenges. Also, one thing that's really interesting to point out is if you melee somebody with the gun in your hand, it does count as a kill with that gun. It's pretty minor, but it will definitely help you in some situations, and I thought it was interesting to point out. Also, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, when you use the Varix sight on a gun, it can be really glitched out, and it will actually cause this challenge to not be completed. Like, you'll get five kills in a single life, but because you're using the Varix sight, sometimes it glitches out and it just doesn't count. So avoid using the Varic site if you're going for the Chameleon Challenge. One other tip if you are really struggling with this is if you use Rejack, if you use the Specialist Ability Rejack, if you get, let's just say, four kills with your gun and then you get downed and you successfully Rejack, you jump up and you get another kill with your gun, it still counts as five kills within one life, even though you don't get the actual Bloodthirsty Medal. So Rejack can be very effective. It can give you that second chance to continue that life and continue getting those kills within that life. Once you get all of these camos done, then you will unlock the gold camo and you will have that gun completed. As for diamond camo, just in case you guys aren't aware, because I know some people aren't, the diamond camo is earned once you earn gold for every gun within that class. So once you earn gold for every single SMG, then you'll unlock diamond for all of the SMGs. And then once you get diamond for all of the classes, that's when you get dark matter. So there we have it. That's going to wrap it up for episode one of my Dark Matter guides. Let me know in the comments section below which class of weapon you'd like me to cover next. And also, if you have any other tips that I didn't share here to help people get their SMG camos more effectively, please let me know. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.